as opposed to numerous pasture walks and field days, as a pioneer of rotational grazing in Georgia, and a constant proponent of its implementation. With that, Ted. Thank you very much. Well, we've heard some great stories here today, and I've already started compiling a list of what I'm going to start working on when I get home, some of the things I've seen. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm Ted Hughes. Uh, I want to thank you all for this opportunity to, to be here today, and uh, I hope that, uh, that you, you've seen and heard and continue to see and hear things that uh, make you want to get excited about forage production. I, I'm excited about it. And I'm uh, about to make a mess here. Uh, my wife, let's see. That's my wife, Patsy. She would love to be here today, but as you know, somebody's got to make a living. <laughs> but uh, no, she, she was getting sick, and uh, she was afraid she, she, she didn't want to come and share anything she had with everybody. Um, Patsy and I uh, have a farm we call Chantilly in Overthorpe County, Georgia, and uh, I believe I pushed the wrong button again. Uh, we try to man uh, we try to uh, we, we try to manage to where we have all the nutritional requirements of our cattle through uh, through forage forage production. Uh, we purchased uh, 25 acres of a worn out cotton farm. In 1966 and we started with, with just a little more than a dream and uh, I want to tell you that that forage production and soil conservation is is what kept our dream from becoming a nightmare uh, when I was a uh, when I was a little boy, 70 years ago, and I came into Oglethorpe County, I remember hard times. And uh, I'm not just talking about hard times economically. I'm talking about hard times for the land. Uh, every inch of land in Oglethorpe County that uh, wasn't in cut over timber land was being plowed and planted. People were trying to scratch a living out of uh, red dirt. It was completely void of topsoil. I know y'all read about them dredging the channel down in Savannah. A lot of that stuff come from our place. <laughs> but I can remember, I can remember as a kid playing in big red raw eroded uh, gullies. Uh, I remember when when a shower of rain would bring enough water in the ditches that we could paddle around. I mean, we thought we thought like we had a wash over the creek, uh, just a, the, uh, just a storm, just a thunderstorm, and you could just see the water, muddy water, flowing everywhere. Oglethorpe County was like a big red soil on the face of the earth, and forage production and management is is what we saw slowly but surely healing our land and changing the complexion of our county from red to green. That's why I can say to you today that I'm dead serious about what I'm talking about. I love, I love what I'm doing. I wake up every morning uh, feeling good about the accomplishments we've made and about the accomplishments we're going to continue to make. And, and uh, we come to things like this. And when I say we, when I say we, we did this and we did that, I'm not talking about me and Patsy. I'm talking about everybody in this room, everybody in this state, and everybody in this country who loves their land and is willing to work to preserve it and protect it so that our children and grandchildren can have the same opportunities that we have. And I think that's terribly important. And I want you to know that I'm dead serious about it. 
Chantilly has twice been um, twice been uh, recognized as farmer fa farm family of the year in uh, Broad River watershed. What am I doing here, man? I tell you what, I know more about growing grass than I do working these. <laughs> we've been twice, twice we've been, I didn't even touch it that time. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. I, I won't lay it down there no more, how about that? Um, I'll stick it right under there. Okay. Twice we've been named Farmer of the Year in, in the Broad River Watershed District in, in, in Georgia. And I think that we're the only family that's ever been recognized twice. Uh, and then uh, it was the first time it was in uh, 1990, 1986. The second time was in 2006. And then in 2008, we won the Governor's Environmental Stewardship Award in our district. And so we have a background in soil and water conservation, and, and uh, we're proud of it. Uh, our entire operation, like I say, is designed to provide the nutritional requirements of our cattle through forage production. But don't let my boots, my hat, and my cows fool you. I'm not a cattle producer. I'm a grass farmer. I grow grass for a living. Grass is my cash crop. And, and I treat it like a cash crop. Our cattle simply convert our grass into a valuable, marketable product. That's why we have them. Uh, we have an extensive, we have an extensive, uh, I don't want you to be fooled by my cows, or my grass. We, we're grass farmers. We have an extensive rotational grazing system. And we have uh, 20, 28 pastures, I believe. Each one of those uh, water tanks, we have, we have, uh, we have six, water stations and uh, the fences go off. They each got big tanks, water tanks in them, heavy use areas. As a satellite view of the, one of the water stations, you can see the hub in the middle where the tank is and the fences go off like spokes of a wheel and hence the name wagon wheel grazing system. Uh, we use split uh, hot wire to split some of the larger pastures. We step graze some of it. Uh, we rotate our cattle constantly. Um, one of the things that rotation helps us to, to distribute in the nutrients, what they would call nutrients, now we always call it manure. So manure is more proper than other words. But, uh, <clears throat> but anyhow, it, we, we try not to have areas where the cows hang around and loaf and, and have big, do big deposits. But we also have... Uh, we also have a hay barn, but I have a friend, it's a, he's the district, no, no, he's a state grassland conservationist, grazing, grazing conservationist, Philip Brown, y'all know him. And Philip told me a long time ago, he said, anything you put between your cow and your grass is expensive, especially if it's made out of iron or oil. And I think what Philip was trying to tell me was something that kind of already knew. God made cows, God made grass, man made hay balers. I mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> any, anyhow, uh, we, use, we use hay as an insurance policy. We, we do feed some hay, we don't feed much. We feed it when we have to. We feed as little as possible. Uh, we have a, a cow-calf operation and we have we stock our calves. We wean them and stock them. And uh, our calves are born in the winter time. And my wife wanted me to point this out. She said, "Ain't no leaves on that tree. It's winter time. Look at the grass. That's the way we like it. We like for our cattle to to, to go out there and graze. Um, we we wean our calves as, uh, and stock them. Sometimes when we stock them, um, we uh, we, we double our stocking rate for, for a short period of time. You know, you got a cow calf, that's a unit. Then you wean the calf, you got two units. And one day you got one unit, the next day you got two units. But uh, 
But if you're going to have the kind of grass to stock a cattle with and, and keep your cattle gaining weight, you have to work at it. I think if you had a pencil, and every time I mention the word management today, if you make a mark, it'll show you that I consider management the most important thing we got on our plate every day. Um, our, our pastures are predominantly tall fescue, common Bermuda grass, with several varieties of white clover. We also plant some ryegrass, and uh, we we uh, overseed our pastures with uh, with uh, clover. And we usually have about two or three different varieties of clover. Durano is one we're really happy with. Um, we have we have a lot of weeds, but the cattle seem to like them. If you feed them to them before they get tough, um, we weeds are not all bad. I think if you got a piece of land and you quit doing anything to it, you're gonna go out there and there's gonna be a bunch of weeds come up. God does that so that land don't wash away so bad. Now, so that tells you the weeds are doing something good. When you cut them down, the roots stay in the ground. Weeds are not bad. Most of my permanent pastures, like I say, are fescue, clover, and, and uh, Bermuda grass. We start stockpiling forage. They talk about stockpiling fescue. I, I stockpile whatever's growing. We start stockpiling forage, and uh, the RFQ on this stuff we're stockpiling is relatively high. Uh, used to, we used to think it wasn't. We used to think, well, I don't burn over fescue, it ain't much good. But we found out that on this one pasture we just uh, checked this year, the, the uh, RFQ was from 147 to 177. That's pretty high. Uh, uh, so, so what we do is we, 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 we we stockpile that forage, and then when 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 we graze everything else, we start grazing it. The, the cattle don't need supplement. Um, that's some more of our stockpile stuff. We like to go into the pasture with a, a little feed on the cows. Uh, cheap one cheap way of storing feed is on your cows. Let them get fat, and uh, and so we we like for the cows to go in with a body condition score of seven, six, seven, or eight, but you know, when they go in for the, to the winter, they, they start calving in January. That's another look at our, our grazing system, and uh, you, can, you can see some of those uh, pastures can water from two waters, that, that just doubles our efficiency. Uh, we produce quality forage, and we either graze it, or we put it up for hay. We provide fresh water. We move the cows constantly. They love it. They, they, they wait for us. Uh, we have mineral boxes that are portable. We can move the mineral boxes around and put them where the cows are not grazing, and, and we, can, we can spread the grazing out more by making them go to the mineral box. Uh, we have permanent fence. We have temporary fence. Uh, we have weed control. I don't like chemicals. Uh, I do use them. I spot spray for thistles, briars, fence lines, but uh, I've seen people abuse chemicals and it costs them. Uh, we have uh, filter strips around our ponds. We also use, have some recreation in our ponds, <laughs> and uh, we have good, clean, fresh water. Heavy use areas in the corrals, indoor working facilities makes it easier on man and beast. My pastor's two best friends, a bush hog and a, and a cedar. Uh, tricks of the trade, that thing you see floating around in that tank is a peanut butter jar with two little slits cut in it just, just uh, below the, the lid there. And there's a, pe a, 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 pool, a pool pill, chlorine pill. Put it in there, put a rock in there to help hold it down, turn it upside down. It just floats around in there and dribbling chlorine out. That's not my. That's not my idea. I'm a copycat. I I I I see things. I hear things. I try things, and the things that work, I try to incorporate them into my into my thing. Uh, 
if you really want to get serious about managing your grazing, it's real easy. All you got to do is build a fence. And when you build that fence, it don't have to be no elaborate fence, expensive fence. It just needs to be a hot wire. And then you're going to start seeing the value of it. Now, these calves are over here grazing. The mama's over here waiting. Those calves are creeping over. It makes a big difference. You gotta, as, you, as your system evolves, you're going to have to put more into it. You're going to have to consider shade, water, and a bunch of stuff. But I want to tell you, like my mama told me, if there's a will, there's a way. If you want to do better, you can figure out a way to do it. Um, I got bees that pollinate. I got more bees. They do that occasionally. <laughs> Uh, we have we have uh, pollination plants to attract them, clover. We have field days. We, uh, we 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 appreciate all the help we get, and we give help. We we let them use our farm for just about anything they want. Uh, this is my wife's garden. The garden on Chantilly is probably one of the most unique gardens in the state, and uh, and we use the garden and the and the uh, rotation of grazing system, and, and the crater, we have a meteor crater on our farm, and we draw a whole lot of people out there, people that, that uh, need to know about agriculture. And we use the opportunity, having these people out there, to tell them about what we're doing. I heard people here today talk about people need to know what you're doing. If they know what you're doing, they don't, they don't have to make up stuff. Uh, we, we do this. Stewardship is, God, is job one. And I want to tell you that stewardship is an act of reverence to God. And therefore, it brings blessings to us and, and to mankind. I want to tell you, we need to be good stewards of what God has blessed us with. And I thank you so much for, for allowing me to do this. And I hope that it's been beneficial to you. I know that what I've heard today has been beneficial to me. Anybody got a question? We put it in in 1970. Uh, there was an agronomist at the University of Georgia. His name was Elvis Beattie. Well, the name Elvis has really hit it with me back then. <laughs> but anyhow, he was he was way ahead of his time. He uh, he was a great man, and he was a he was a scientist. He said, "Ted, I want to tell you, I'm a scientist. I think I'm 25, 30, 35 years down the road." He, he said, "People are going to laugh what we're going to do out here, but you just let them laugh, and you see what how much, how far you are ahead of him." That's what he told me in 1970, and we put that system in, and. Uh, Lately, about the last 10 years, people have been coming from everywhere to look at it, and, and I'm glad. I'm really happy about it. I'm not taking credit for it. I'm just saying that God has blessed us. God has blessed us with opportunity. He's blessed us with knowledge. All we're lacking is determination. If we can be determined to take the opportunities that God has given us and the knowledge that he has blessed us with, we can turn this world upside down. Thank you.